Hello, let's begin one more session on multivariate calculus integration. Now, in the last lecture session, we had been talking about double integrals and how to evaluate the double integrals with the concept of change of variables. Let us recapitulate what's the formula for such change of variables from the xy to uv coordinate system. So that is given by the formula over here, fxy dx dy over the region r is given by the double integral f of x uv y uv. That means here we have a function of uv modulus del of xy del of uv du dv over the region s where del of xy del of uv is called the Jacobian of the transformation and is given by this 2 by 2 determinant whose elements in the first row are del x del u del x del v and the second row elements are del y del u del y del v. Now today's lecture session we will see a particular case of this change of variables where we will make a transformation from Cartesian to polar coordinates and we know that the well-known relation between Cartesian to polar variables are x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta. So we have a figure also showing the relation. So if we have a point x, y over here in polar coordinates it's denoted by r theta where r is the distance from the origin and theta is the angle which this line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. Now, if we want to evaluate double integrals by change of variables from Cartesian to polar coordinate system, of course, the first thing what we will need is the Jacobian of this transformation. So what is that? Del of xy, del of r theta. So it will be given by the determinant del x del r, del x del theta, del y del r, del y del theta. So in place of x, we have put here r cos theta and place of y, we have put here r sin theta. So if we evaluate this partial derivatives, like here del del r of r cos theta, it's going to be cos theta. This term over here is going to be minus r sin theta. Similarly, del del r of r sin theta is just sin theta and del del theta of r sin theta will be r cos theta. So if we calculate the value of this determinant, this will be cos theta into r cos theta plus sin theta into r sin theta. So finally, it comes as r cos square theta plus sin square theta. So it's nothing but r. So therefore, we should remember this result that the Jacobian determinant for the transformation from Cartesian to polar coordinate system is always r. And hence, when we will evaluate some integral with such change of variables from Cartesian to polar coordinate system, the differential dx dy will be replaced by r dr d theta. So let us see problems now. Evaluate the integral x y dy dx over the region r, where r lies in the sector 0 less or equal to theta less or equal to pi by 2 between the curves x squared plus y squared equal to 1 and x squared plus y squared equal to 5. So I think we can easily recognize this curves. What are these? These are of course circles. This is a circle with radius 1 and this is a circle with radius root 5. And since theta lies between 0 to pi by 2, this implies that we are only in the first quadrant. So if we draw the figure, it will look like this. The region R is bounded by these two circles x squared plus y squared equal to 1, which is nothing but r equal to 1 in polar coordinates. And the other boundary is x squared plus y squared equal to 5, which is r equal to root 5 in the polar coordinates. And your theta is varying from 0 to pi by 2. So now see, if we want to evaluate this given integral over this region r in the Cartesian coordinate system, the boundary is such it's going to be difficult. It will be easier if we transform into polar coordinates. So what will be the region of integration in the polar coordinates? It will be represented like this now that S will be now given by the points R theta where R of course is varying from 1 to root 5 
and theta is varying from 0 to pi by 2. So now the given integral, double integral xy dy dx over the region r in polar coordinates will be represented like this. So what is that? In place of x we have r cos theta, in place of y we have r sin theta and dy dx will be replaced by as we have already told r dr d theta and the limits r is varying from 1 to root 5 and theta is varying from 0 to pi by 2. So now we can evaluate this integral very easily. We can separate basically the theta terms and the r terms. So we can see here r one more r over here and the third r over here. So we get r cube dr with the limits going from 1 to root 5 and here we have sine theta cos theta d theta theta varying from 0 to pi by 2. So in order to evaluate this fast integral with respect to theta sine theta cos theta we have written as half sine 2 theta d theta and now this sine 2 theta as you integrate it gives you minus cos 2 theta by 2. Of course I have a half term over here limits are running from 0 to pi by 2 and r cube as you integrate we get r 4 by 4 limits are running from 1 to root 5. So now you just put the limits and if you simplify do a little bit of calculations your answer is going to be 3. So this problem is done. Now let us go into one more example. Calculate the double integral x squared plus y squared dx dy over r where r is the circle x squared plus y squared equal to 2x. But how does this circle look like? This is not a circle passing I mean with center at the origin right. So let us rewrite the equation a little bit to find how does it really look like. So x squared plus y squared equal to 2x. We take 2x on the left side add a 1. So another 1 also comes on the right side. So if we rearrange a little bit, it's x minus 1 whole square plus y square equal to 1. So now hope we can identify the circle. This is a circle with radius 1 and center 1, 0, right? So the region R now looks like this. Now because the region of integration is once again a circle, even your integrand is x square plus y square, so it will be quite advantageous if we now transform from the Cartesian to the polar coordinate system. So how will the equation of the circle look like in the polar coordinate system? For that let us substitute x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta and see that x square plus y square equal to 2x now transforms like this. So we have r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta equal to 2r cos theta. So left hand side becomes just r square. So finally we get r equal to 2 cos theta. This is the equation of your circle x square plus y square equal to 2x in the polar coordinates. So therefore what will be the region s actually in your polar coordinates? The region of integration in the polar coordinates will now be given by the set of points r theta where r is varying from 0 to cos theta. Why? Because see if we take any point over here as r theta the minimum value as we cover the whole circle the minimum value of r will be 0 and the maximum value it can touch the circle the boundary of the circle of course so it will be 2 cos theta. And theta you see that as we move around the circle here the value of theta is minus pi by 2 whereas if we reach here the maximum value of theta is pi by 2. So theta will vary from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Okay, so now let us evaluate this double integral in polar coordinates. So x squared plus y squared dx dy over the region r now will be written like this. So we put here r square cos square theta plus r square sine square theta and dx dy as we already know will be replaced by r dr d theta. So, of course, here cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1. So, we are just left with r cube dr d theta. And then we put the limits for r and theta. So, r is varying from 0 to 2 cos theta and theta is varying from 
minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Okay, so as we integrate r cube, it gives us of course r 4 by 4, your limits are 0 to 2 cos theta. As we put the limits, we will get as 4 cos 4 theta d theta, theta is varying from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Now see this integral minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 cos 4 theta, we can write as 2 times 0 to pi by 2 cos 4 theta d theta. And you can use your formula, I hope you remember you had a formula for the definite integral 0 to pi by 2 cos n theta d theta. You can use that formula and get your answer. And otherwise, if you don't want to use the formula, you can do integration also. You can just write cos 4 theta as cos square theta whole square, where cos square theta will be 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2. So you can just again square it up and integrate term by term. And finally, you are going to get the answer as 3 pi by 2. Okay, so this problem is over. So we will close this session today also. And in the next lecture session, we will see how to apply double integrals in finding area. Okay, so thank you and goodbye till then.